You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. So, um, yeah, today we're coming to you without a guest. We just want to talk to you. Uh, 1-866-494-9866 is the number. If you've got any questions about unions or anything else, we'd prefer to talk about unions, but we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, and we have gotten some questions throughout the week. Uh, we, we've been prepping for today's episode uh, by just fielding audience questions. We didn't come with anything prepared that has not been asked from us by the audience. We are only doing audience recommended topics today so the first one and this was a comment that we got on YouTube a couple a couple weeks ago now and 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 so I logged it in, I logged it in my uh, in in my brain bank and said we're gonna talk about this t- today uh, and it's a good question he he's a member of a union and he said their CBA is expiring soon their collective bargaining agreement their contract is expiring soon uh, what should I expect um, for the renegotiation process. And I think that's a really good topic, uh, for, for conversation. And, um, I think that that is good for folks as, as well that don't have a union that are thinking about organizing or for the, Am- I know that we've got some Amazon workers down in Bessemer that listen to us online. The renegotiation process is going to look very similar to the initial negotiation process to get your first contract. So we're going to be tackling both of those topics, uh, right now. And David, we are, this is why I love having David on the show or one of the reasons why I love having David on the show because he is old as dirt. He has done this Dinosaur so old. so many times. I mean, he's been he's been negotiating contracts since they got off the ark. So since they were inscribed in tablets. Yes, form. yes, yeah. He's but his first contract he had to etch it into stone, and he yeah got some bloody knuckles, but but he he got it. Uh, so David, talk to us about what you know. Uh, I haven't actually. I'm a, I'm a union member. I have read my contract multiple times, but I haven't actually gone through a negotiation process yet. So uh, you know, I know what happens. I've read a lot about it, but you've got that firsthand experience. So walk us through uh, what happens when your contract expires, or when you get a union and you're about to negotiate a contract. Yep. So you know, the first thing is to build a committee. Mm -hmm. And generally speaking, you know, the folks down at Amazon, they don't have bylaws yet. And bylaws are uh, democratically elected rules that the the group sets upon themselves. And, And generally within those bylaws, it will say how many negotiating committee people will be elected to negotiate it will you know if you've got a large facility such as yours Mm -hmm. you it will probably say there will be this many people out of this department and there will be this many people out of this and it gives you know it's rules that 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 all the brothers and sisters place upon themselves to ensure that it's a fair fairly represented negotiation that it represents not just one group but say for instance in ours that it represents production workers that it represents maintenance workers that it represents the warehouse workers Mm. fairly so i would say if you've if you are are in a union currently and are considering you know going into negotiations soon then have a look at your bylaws And and a lot of people have no clue where their bylaws are at and it's incumbent upon your union officers your elected union officers in your local to provide you with a set of those bylaws they Mm -hmm. should have them if you've got uh internet space you know a website they uh, ours is on the uh, on our website Mm -hmm. uh but if not then ask your steward in your area give me a copy of my bylaws Mm -hmm. that will set up the the parameters for negotiations then generally, you know. And so really quick, the, the negotiation committee, you know, the process for electing it is, is going to be different in different places. But but it does, the people that you elect to be on the negotiating committee, they come out of the workforce. Yeah. These are rank and file workers. These are not, uh, you know, these are not like union bosses or whatever that you're going to have you're going to have staff and you're going to have staff lawyers advising you and you're going to be able to look at other contracts from across your international but the people that are actually going to be at the bargaining table 
their workers. Their yeah. their workers that you have you've been on the line with, you've sat in the cube next to them, whatever your work situation is like. These are just normal, regular working folks writing the contract that they're gonna that and, and they're the folks that you elect and they're the folks that are gonna represent you. It's not some nef, some like nebulous outsider coming in to negotiate for you. It is you. Yeah, and there's a reason for that. And you, because you get a lot of times, even like a lot of the older hands, uh, long-time union members that's never been in negotiations say, why don't we have lawyers? Why aren't we hiring lawyers to come in and write these contracts for us? Mm -hmm. That's because we are going to be reading them. Right. And have you ever read your credit card uh, right. uh, rules that, right. you know, I mean, it's like 60 pages and you make it through the first uh, mm -hmm. paragraph and, and your eyes start glazing over the whole reason we negotiate these contracts. And I, when I say we, it goes back to what you were mm -hmm. initially saying the workers, because the workers are going to be the ones that's going to have to enforce this contract. And it, we want it to be clear exactly right. what our intent was. And we don't want a bunch of lawyeries, gray mm -hmm. area language, put in the contract. We want to make sure we right. get what we want. Right. So yeah, you 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 elect a committee out of the shop floor. Uh, you know, every every union is going to do it different. Uh, all of our uh, negotiating committees go to Maryland to our training center. Mm -hmm. We spend a week, sometimes more, sitting in offices all day long from eight in the morning till normally eight or nine at night, uh, going over the previous contract mm -hmm. and fine tuning what we want out of the upcoming one. Mm -hmm. And then you go, you know, generally a month, roughly a month before. So, and like I say, everyone's going to be different, but you want to get your contract negotiated prior to the expiration of the current one that you're working under. Right. So you go in and everybody sits down at the table and you negotiate with the company one-on-one. Mm -hmm. -on -one. And now the fine, you, know, you said that the fine tuning of the things that you want out of the contract, there are some more formal and less formal. I think probably the bigger the, the bigger the workplace, the more formalized settings you need. Uh, it, as far as there's actually, there are generally processes that you incorporate Incorporate. It's not not only do the workers elect the bargaining committee, but the bargaining committee then solicits what or, or before the bargaining committee is formed or after. You know, it's different in every union, but but the, there is a solicitation of what the workforce wants, whether that be super formal or super informal. You know, like you actually, you know, I mean, but because the bargaining committee comes off the shop floor, you know these people. They know what you want. You know what they want, and you you get, you know them, and and you have these opportunities to tell them and verbalize what you want to be in the next contract because you've been working under the last contract. You know what's there. You know what your workplace is like and you know what you want to change and you know how that should be done. And so you talk to that, you, you communicate that to your coworkers and, and stuff like that. And I think that democratic, egalitarian kind of input for your the, for, for the rules you'll be work, working under is, is really, really, really cool. Yeah, I think it's important that you pointed that out, something that I glossed over and just completely missed was the fact that before we go to Maryland, we have a, it's roughly a hundred question survey mm -hmm. uh, on all, of, just a generic, but it, it covers just about anybody's contract. It's generic right. enough at where it would. And, and it's like one of the bubble in mm -hmm. surveys and those all get sent back to Maryland they run it through one of these scam machines and data that you have never, I mean, unbelievably right. populated graphs by demographic, by age, by, mm -hmm. uh, by female or male, all these things uh, by shift. Right. By department, what, what all these yep. different groups want. And, and there's know, only I, two things that we negotiate. We negotiate by, based on the survey mm -hmm. and we negotiate based on prior grievances so right. in other words any grievances has come out right, during this past right. contract we try to eliminate the possibility of mm -hmm. having those grievances continue into the next contract and we try to work on the yeah. survey yeah I, I and and you know I, i'm glad that you appreciated that input because i wanted to i know this but not all of the audience would know this you know even though the the negotiating committee is elected from the rank and file uh, from from the shop floor, I didn't want folks to reckon that um, 
to reckon that once they're elected, then they are, you know, then then they become some kind of high and mighty force, and they don't um, they don't take into account the opinions of the other workers or anything like that. You know, it, it's a very it's a very inclusive and democratic process, and and you know, of course, uh, some unions incorporate more than others so for some unions there is more of a for like i've like i've been saying there's more of a formalized process in some unions than others david sounds like they've got their stuff down to a science and that's really cool uh but yeah i wanted i wanted to pull that out because a lot of folks have this idea of you know oh once somebody gets elected they um you know they they just they come, rule over you. they rule over yeah. you and that's not that's, the, not, how I that's not the way it is that's certainly not the idealized way that and and you know i don't know maybe there are some locals no. out there that but uh no. you know i can tell you and our negotiations, anytime there it becomes heated, mm -hmm. the first thing we, you, the first thing that gets mentioned is, what does the survey say? Right. Any, right. Uh, because and that reduces these personal grievances that you want to, that oh, that a person may want to flesh out in negotiations on their own. Right. We but everything that we do is but and and you get called out for it. Yeah. Not just called out. You get made to feel like absolute trash if you're trying to push a personal agenda. Right. So you negotiate the contract based on the survey, based on past grievances. And, and grievances, that is, that's a word that's used for whenever there is a violation, a, a perceived violation of the contract, right? And, or, or a perceived injustice in the workplace. And, and, and so you file a grievance to try to rectify that. And so, and so you file based on past grievances to try to make it less likely to put up guardrails so that these grievances don't actually happen so much in the future. And then you said you, you, try to hammer it out what does the process look like of actually hammering it out with the company how, how does how does that work you know they come to the i'm sure they come to the table with things and and so what does it look like having those conversations with people in management and um and trying to you know what what does it it's look miserable. like at the table it's yeah, I miserable <laughs> uh i mean and, there, and there's no there's no nice way to put it yeah uh, there it is literally uh, if you've ever gone through uh, a divorce, I mean, a absolute terrible divorce, mm -hmm. it is like that for mm -hmm. two solid weeks. It mm -hmm. is just, uh, it's physically demanding, it's mentally demanding, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it just, it breaks you down in every way that you can possibly imagine. Uh, but, the, you know, you, it, for us, it's a group of uh, five from our plant. Mm -hmm. Three from California, three from Orlando, because we negotiate a joint contract with two right. other locals. And uh, there'll be roughly 10 to 12 people from the company side, the mm -hmm. HR people, uh, generally the plant managers, a corporate lawyer out of Atlanta that they hire, one of the union busting lawyers. Mm -hmm. uh, he is there generally there not lead spokesperson but lead spokesperson mm -hmm. uh and it and it goes back and forth and so mm -hmm. what we do is you you spend one week on what we call non-economic issues which mm -hmm. is working right uh you know shifts hours things like that and then you spend one week on economic issues the first week you generally speak on not work on non-economic issues and Generally, we make the first pass, and when we call a pass, we say, you know, the the contract is broken down into articles. So we try to keep it in articles, and we will pass the first article and say, this is what we want. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go over all the changes. There's nothing shady that happens. You know, a lot of times you hear people talk about, I slipped this in, and I slipped that in. There's absolutely nothing slipped in during negotiations because we have the contract printed out we hand it to them and all of the areas that we changed are highlighted and we explain those highlights and why we wanted mm -hmm. it changed whether we refer back to grievances or whether we refer back to our survey we right. say this is the reason why we feel like this would be better for us and y'all mm -hmm. and generally we try to frame it as this is going to be better for y'all it's going right. to make labor peace in the plant right so and the company comes back. They 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 have a caucus. Mm -hmm. Normally, it's an hour, two hours. They modify what we've, and they make their pass and explain their pass. That goes mm -hmm. on literally for two weeks, from eight in the morning 
and most of the times we don't get in bed till around midnight, right. one o'clock. And this is just the negotiating committee. This isn't. Um, this isn't the whole workforce. This is just the, it's just the negotiating yeah. committee that's that's negotiating that. And so that that tells you, you know, how kind of um, how how much the people that that are willing to take on this stuff, like how much work that they actually do. And, and you know, people talk about like freedom isn't free. Democracy is hard work. And the same goes. The same is I true know, in the workplace. Miserable. It is. It's difficult, but it it's miserable, but it's worth it. I can tell you this. I, and, and this is not a lie. Every time I come out of negotiations, I swear to God, I'm never going to do it again. <laughs> Every one of us are like, this is the last time, man. Yeah, I have somebody had else next all time. that I can take. Uh-huh. But, you know, it goes back to the same thing that it goes back, you know, with social justice reform or anything like that. The ones that do it well, they do it well because they care right. and they uh, and they won't they won't quit mm -hmm. because they care. It's just you just. You can you, you keep taking your licks and you keep fighting. Yeah. Okay. So we got a caller on the line. You want to take a caller? You want to work through this a little bit? I, I, there, there's just one or two more questions. Oh, was it, was the question about negotiation or uh, about a contract? He didn't say. He just else? said he had a question. So. Okay. So what, I, I want to wrap this up. Caller, stay on the line. I really appreciate your call. I want to get through this. I've just got a couple more questions for David, uh, and and we should be able to wrap it up here here pretty soon, uh, and then we'll get you on the air to see if you've got any questions. So. Um, you know, you, you mentioned that y'all go back and forth with these negotiations. What happens when there is an impasse, when when y'all are both demanding something and you're saying and you're like, I'm not going to give in. Both sides are saying that they're not going to give in. What happens in that situation uh, or, and I think these are kind of pretty similar things, what happens when the bargaining committee reckons y'all have got a good deal hammered out and y'all are ready to go? What happens in those two situations? Uh, so the easier one is we got a good deal hammered out. We're ready to go. Uh, let's handle that one first. Uh, if, if, if we come to, uh, uh, where we think we've, we've got a good deal, then at the end of the negotiations, the bargaining committee meets independent of the company and we go through the contract and we take a vote. Can mm -hmm. we can we recommend this contract to the membership or not? Mm -hmm. If it's a good contract, I can tell you this: on every contract negotiation that I've been on, we haven't recommended <laughs> the contract. Right. Uh, but if it's a good contract, then we would recommend it, and the membership generally votes on that contract based on the mm -hmm. negotiating committee's recommendations. And so the membership votes on it. Yeah. The bargaining committee does not get final say. We get final, no, we don't get final say on anything. We right. are nothing more than one single member voting whenever mm -hmm. it comes time to vote. Right. Uh, and, and for us, I can tell you, we can vote the contract down with 50% plus one member mm -hmm. and say we don't, we don't want to take this contract. But even then, there's a higher standard to strike. Right. There is a supermajority. So you Yeah, so, so we that can goes vote into the, the next question. down and still have 65% vote to go on strike and unless we get that 66 and 2 thirds, mm -hmm. then we go back to work. Yeah, so that's the next question. What about when y'all come to an impasse when you say when that when there's y'all have something and the company has another thing and y'all are not neither neither sides budging and so basically what happens is the bargaining committee doesn't recommend the contract. What happens in in that situation? Yeah, well, I mean, the last pass is always reserved to the company. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that have uh, authority over the contract. So, in other words, we can make all the recommendations that we want, and that's all they are is recommendations in the negotiating committee. The company, it is, it is on the company to provide us with their interpretation of the contract, and we vote on it. Okay. Uh, you know, I, w I would love for it to be the other way around, but that's just not how it works right. in contract negotiations. So uh, if there's an impasse and the company puts the language that they want in and, and they flip a coin, hoping to God that that the workers don't vote it down. Mm -hmm. And in some cases they do, some cases they don't. Uh, but it's a calculated risk. They mm -hmm. base their numbers the same way we base our numbers. Right. They look at it and say how many people, because they've got a much better 
idea than what people think when it comes time to strike. Right. They've looked at those numbers and they know where they can finesse who's voted to strike in the past. What can we give them that will keep them satisfied while screwing everybody else? It's it's yeah, and and many many times it's normally what they call a sign-in bonus. They will the mm -hmm. last time they offered us an eight thousand dollars sign-in bonus, and we voted it down. So, you know, they'll try to buy the contract mm -hmm. up front because right. they know. And, and and we did not get i don't think we got one red cent more after the strike what we were striking over was the language being able to force people to travel out of state for extended periods up to 90 right. days without any return trips home mm -hmm. and things like that so. yeah so so if you vote uh so if you vote it down and, and y'all like, what does that, wh what do those conversations look like among the membership uh, uh, on like strike versus not to strike? And then it looks um, like a bar fight. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, right. literally people are throwing chairs across the room. People mm. are standing on top of tables. It, it's emotional. It is. And, 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 and that's important. Your life. I've had, yeah, I've had conversations with folks about like kind of squeamish about having a union because they might have to go on strike. And this is, the, this is a, um, a decision that's made with these real risks in mind you are you while you're on strike you don't get paid while you're on strike you know well like, you get strike pay you get strike pay from the union but it's significantly yes. diminished from the from your salary from the company and you know there, i mean there, it's a lot of it's a lot of risk there that people take on and so they they take all, all of everybody's um opinions into account whether or not to go on strike and then you know they'll vote to go you know they'll vote to go on strike or not and while they're on strike obviously the negotiating committee is still working to try to get everybody a fair contract and then if they get another one uh, they get they get another agreement. They'll send it out and they'll vote to stay on strike or not on strike. Blah 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 blah. Go to thevalleylaborreport.org and get yourself a hat. We have got new hats now. New hats. New hats from a new vendor. I like them better personally. There's a few reasons. For one, the biggest reason, we've got the union bug right here. If you're watching on the stream. We've got the union bug right there uh, at, on on the front of the hat, right beside our logo. Let me see that. Let let you see the hat. It's it's really really nice. I like it a lot. David's showing it off, uh, making me expose my hat head to the world. Your hair looks wonderful. It's great. Uh, you do not, contrary to the pictures that David tweeted out, you do not have to wear it as a flat bill. Uh, I don't know what has gotten into him, but but you can, you can if you want to go. If you want, if yeah. you want to look absurd. I thought that was, I thought that was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told David when he tweeted that picture out. I was like, man, I haven't worn a flat bill since I was like 12. Dude, like, I see every. Maybe it's because I, I'm like listening to a lot of rap. But maybe. I, I, mean, I, don't I, know. I see everybody in the scene wearing I, these. I don't know. I look absurd you know. when I wear a flat bill. So. Well, I think everybody does. But regardless, <laughs> I, I never wore them when they were, you know, in, in style. So I thought it was absurd then. But yeah, and and you know, like the structure of the hat. We we had a we had a, a smaller run with another shop um, a while back. And but but and and we did switch vendors. The structure of this hat is just better. I think it's a different material, um, and it's I, I just I like it better. It's a it's in in my opinion it's a better hat. And you can go to our website thevalleylaborreport.org, snag you one of them. They are uh, thirty five dollars uh, with shipping, so that's uh, you know thirty five dollars and that's it. We'll ship it to you wherever you are. Uh, it's great. I love it. It. I am very, very happy with the hat, and uh, so so you should snag one while you can. So thanks for tuning in, folks. Here's an announcement right at the top. The North Alabama DSA is holding a necessities drive every Saturday. Every Saturday, that means this Saturday, too, from 3 to 5 p.m. at the IBEW Local 558 Union Hall on Clinton Avenue here in Huntsville, right across from Yellowhammer and Campus 805. So if you're in the area, you want to drop off some clothes, some non-perishable food items, blankets, then swing by the IBEW Union Hall right across from Yellowhammer and Campus 805 from 3 to 5 p.m. this Saturday and every Saturday all day donations will be forwarded to the Mana House. Follow at DSA North Alabama on Twitter for more information. 
If you want to see what we're up to throughout the week, get our snide quips about the news of the day, then you should follow us on social media. We're on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The Valley Labor Report. We're on Twitter at Labor Reporters. I'm on Twitter at Jacob M underscore A-L. David is on Twitter at Radical Unionist. That's spelled R-A-D-I-C-L Unionist. If you missed part of the show and want to go back and watch it later, you can search YouTube for The Valley Labor Report and subscribe to our channel. Uh, uh, you can go back and watch the full show there, and we also clip segments throughout uh, and release those throughout the week. So if you just there's one thing that you might be interested in, you can go back and see all the topics that we've talked about in the past. Uh, we also upload the program on more than 11 different podcasting apps. So to see if we are on your listening platform of choice, go to thevalleylaborreport.transistor.fm slash subscribe. Uh, we do now have a website, thevalleylaborreport.org. Going to talk more about that in just a second and finally if you appreciate our work and want to help us stay on the air consider throwing us a couple dollars a month on patreon.com slash the valley labor report 